By far the best way to get vitamin D naturally, the best way to get vitamin D by any means, is by exposing our skin to the sun. And specifically, we need to expose our skin to ultraviolet light coming from the sun. In the last video, the last episode of this podcast, we talked about why ultraviolet light from the sun is good for you. And one of the reasons for that was because we can generate vitamin D in our skin when we are exposed to ultraviolet light, specifically ultraviolet B light from the sun. Now, the problem is if you live in somewhere like London in the United Kingdom, there is not enough ultraviolet light coming from the sun for a lot of the year. So the ultraviolet index is an index that tells you how much how much of the ultraviolet, how much of the light that's coming from the sun is in the ultraviolet range. And the reason that such an index exists is because when the range, when the ultraviolet index is above three, three or above, then people with particularly lighter skin need to be careful about exposing their skin to the sun too much because that UVB radiation could cause skin damage and ultimately skin cancer, melanoma. But you also need the UV index to be above three in order to get enough vitamin D. If it's below three, you won't be able to make any vitamin D. So in London, in winter, November, December, January, February, and even large chunks of March and even into April, the UV index is too low. It's only high enough on average during the spring and summer and August months from, May, from March to October. So that's an issue. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere or far away from the equator, you're going to need to make sure that you're paying attention to what the UV index is month by month and also just day by day. Some days the UV index won't be high enough to make vitamin D. You need to get out there. When the UV index is three or above, get out into the sun, expose your body to the sun. We'll come back to how much of the body you really ideally need to be exposing in a minute. But just to suffice for now, here this is New York. And one of the things to be aware of as well is not only do the UV... Uh, the, the the UV index, not only does it vary month by month, higher in the summer, uh, non, much lower to non-existent in winter, it also varies through the day, through the actual cycle of the day. So generally speaking, the UV index will only be high enough to make enough vitamin D in a temporal zone such as uh, New, where New York is or London is, from around about 10 a.m. in the morning up to around about 3 p.m. in the afternoon for a lot of the, the, the season. Now, New Yorkers, you're, you're blessed because uh, in summer, so in, in the months from, what's that, April, May, June, July, August, September, uh, the UV index is basically above three for almost the whole day. But outside of those months, then you need to be making sure you're getting sunlight between the hours of about 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. And same goes for London as well, even more extremely. Now, just let's just just as an exp as a comparison, there are places in the world, i.e., those along the equator, where the UV that's coming from the sun comes all year round, and you can see that here in the Kampala, Kampala, capital city of Uganda, my homeland you'll see that UV, the UV index never goes below five on average throughout the year. And I'd imagine if you looked at the, uh, the, the variation of UV through the day, there'd probably be similarly not that much variation. But suffice to say, most of you watching this video are based in the United States or in Europe, Northern Europe. So you need to be, you know, getting out, particularly in the summer, get outside in the daytime, in the middle of the day to make sure that you get enough vitamin D. Now, the follow-up question then is, well, how, how long do we have to be out in the sun? And this is a, is a good, image, good image here. In short, it depends on how dark your skin is or how light your skin is. We talked in the previous podcast episode about how having lots of eumelanin in the skin is has really positive impact because it means that we can go out in the skin for much longer periods of time without getting without any damage. The darker your skin is, the longer you can spend out in the sun. Skin cancer is melanoma is virtually unheard of amongst people with very dark skin, whereas it's very, it's much more common amongst those with very light skin. But there's a trade-off because it's generally accepted amongst, you know, scientists who look into this that the one of the reasons why lighter skin evolved as people moved away from the equator from Africa they lost that pigmentation in their skin, partly 
to enable, partly because there was less sun. They were going further and further away, away from the equator, less and less sun, which means that if they had very dark skin, the idea is that they just they would never be able to make enough vitamin D because there's hardly ever hardly any sun, as we saw in the London image. So the idea goes that they evolved lighter skin, which means that if you look here in summer, fair, very fair skinned people only have to spend about 10 minutes in the sun to get enough vitamin D. In spring, it's 20 minutes. In winter, it's 30 minutes. For medium skinned people, in the summer, they have to spend around about 50 minutes. In the spring and autumn, about 100 minutes. So that's, you know, two hours. And then in, in I mean, in winter, if there's enough vitamin, if there's enough UV in the in the sun, which there probably isn't going to be in somewhere like London, they'd have to spend, what, six, 12, eight, nearly three hours. And for dark skinned people, goodness me, look at this. People like me, we'd have to spend around about an hour and 40 minutes in the summer exposing our skin to get enough vitamin D. In the summer, that's where the UV is at its strongest and most consistent. 200 minutes in the spring, autumn, and winter, 300 minutes. So it's very important for you, if you are dark skinned, you must, must, must be spending a long time in the sun. And I know, we know, statistics show that people don't spend that long outside full stop. So, you know, that's a problem. You've got to spend a lot more time the darker your skin is. And more, there's some other points as well that that doesn't just mean going out fully clothed, hat on, you know, sh shades and stuff. No, you, these estimates of how long you've got to be spending out in the sun, that's assuming that you are exposing your face, yep, arms, yep, legs and back. Frankly, it's assuming that you're going to be going out in just your shorts, <laughs> you know. And if you're not going out in just your shorts, then you're going to have to spend even longer out in the sun, even in summer, you know. So that's a really important point. I don't think a lot of people realise is that your skin must be exposed. Ultraviolet light does not penetrate very, very well through lots of clothes. It will not penetrate sunscreen. And this is another important point. A lot of our women, for example, in particular, are wearing cosmetics which have SPF, sunblock in there, skin protection factor 15 and 30 and upwards. If you are wearing, if you were wearing these cosmetics or creams or whatever it might be, or if you're just putting on sunscreen, then please be aware that no ultraviolet B light is going to come through to your, uh, to you, into your keratinocytes, your skin cells, and thus you are not going to be able to generate a synthesized vitamin D from, from the sun. Simple as that. So, one of my, I, I've recently been having some conversations with the nursery that my youngest goes to, and I asked him, can you not put sunscreen on because he's dark skinned and he's not, he needs to be able to make vitamin D. He's got melanin in his skin, so he doesn't need to worry about, it's really worry so much about, uh, you know, damage from UVB rays. They came, you know, they came back with a very generic answer, blah, blah, blah. But probably for parents in particular, just be aware of that. Don't fall into the trap. If you have the darker your skin, your children are, the less need there is for sunscreen. And if you keep putting on sunscreen on them, especially if they're darker skinned, you are basically preventing them from, from synthesizing vitamin D in their skin and thus making it much more likely that they will become vitamin D deficient and all the negative impacts that come from that. And finally, you may or may not know that UV radiation, UVB, does not penetrate glass. So it's not enough to just sit by the window. It's good to sit by the window if you can while you're working or whatever, whatever, because the, you know, the, uh, the, the UVA still comes through, the visible light comes through, and that has lots of health benefits like the blue light we talked about in episode two, I believe. But if you're, if you're sitting behind a glass, uh, you're not going to be making any vitamin D because the UVB will not come into that room. So lots of really important things there to be aware of. You've got to expose as much of your body to the sun as possible, and you've got to do it for as long as you possibly can, particularly at the right times of day, in order to be able to generate any vitamin D. Now, let's quickly talk about some other sources. The most commonly cited other sources of vitamin D are, of course, fish, and specifically oily fish, like your trout, salmon, uh, mackerel, those kinds of fish. Those are the, the, the foods that have the highest amount of vitamin D. And specifically, they have vitamin D3, which is the form of vitamin D that we generate in our skin as well. And it's the form of vitamin D that is the easiest to absorb for humans. So vitamin D3 is, is really good. And 
Interestingly, I, I found this study here called the evaluation of vitamin D3 content in selected dried, canned and smoked fish. And what the what the study found is that, yes, the canned fish, you know, in oil, yeah, they've got decent amounts of vitamin D, you know, important sources, sardines, salmon, you know, uh, anchovies and so forth, decent, decent amount of uh, vitamin D. However, dr they found that dried fish samples had by far much, much, higher, much, much higher amounts of vitamin D than even the, the canned fish. So dried sardines, dried mackerel, dried, dried shrimp had upwards of, you know, nearly 10 times as much vitamin D in them as most of the, 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 the tinned versions of, uh, of these fish. So that's something to, to be aware of. If you're able to find dried fish in the dried side dried oily fish so mackerel sardines that kind of stuff do so because that would be something very important particularly during those months here in london for example where there's not enough sunlight to generate synthesized vitamin d in our skin now interesting another another source of vitamin d another good source of vitamin d this time vitamin d2 is mushrooms D, vitamin D2 is what veg, is what uh, fungi create. That's the vitamin D form they create and under exposure to sunlight. And I found this very interesting paper here called A Review of Mushrooms as a Potential Source of Dietary Vitamin D. This is written in 2018 in Nutrients. And what they found is that, first of all, wild mushrooms have much higher proportions of vitamin D than the regular shop-bought mushrooms, you know, butter mushrooms that you buy in the shop. So that's one thing. If you can find wild mushrooms, then get hold of those because they're much more potent vitamin D-wise than the other more, you know, regular mushrooms. And then even those regular mushrooms, if you take those mushrooms, slice them, put them out in the sun, expose them to sunlight for, you know, an hour or two, Apparently, that then um, turbo boosts, turbocharges the amount of vitamin D in the in the mushroom. So dried mushrooms are really, really important source of vitamin D potentially. And finally, shockingly, surprisingly, it turns out it turns out that you can actually get vitamin D from dark chocolate. And this is news to me, but. Um, this this study here called cocoa and chocolate are sources of vitamin D two. Basically, what they what they found is that um, vi dark chocolate has high levels of vitamin D in them, and they they suppose that the reason for that is that when the cocoa beans are being prepared, you know, dried out in the sun, they get contaminated by fungi. We've just talked about fungi. They get contaminated by fungi, and that fungi in the dark chocolate then under the under the UVB radiation from the sun creates vitamin D2 and that is then in the chocolate. And they found that dark chocolate amongst all the different forms of chocolate had the highest amount of vitamin D2, uh, which is comparable to the amount of vitamin D in some of the other food sources that we mentioned. So those are the, those are the main things that you need to do. First and foremost, get out in the sun lots and do it lots of the, you know, for a long period of time. The longer, the darker your skin, the longer you have to be out in the sun, especially if you're living in somewhere like the UK or New York. Other food, other sources of vitamin D, uh, you're looking at oily fish, dried fish in particular, oily fish might be really good, and mushrooms, dried mushrooms in particular, really good, dried under the sun, that is, direct sunlight, and also chocolate, dark chocolate, over 75% chocolate, get hold of some of that, a good way of you getting enough vitamin D naturally. So that's been this episode, take care for now, and we'll see you next time round.